Alrighty, I hereby call to order this regularly scheduled or irregularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board. Um, the time is 6.30 p.m. Our first order of business will be to approve the minutes of our last meeting, May 13th, 2024. I motion we approve the minutes for May 13th. Second. We have a motion made and seconded to approve the minutes of May 13th, 2024. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing, Jeff. Thank you. All right, first order of new business is our summer schedule. Yes. Um, I don't think that we have any conflicts, so whatever's most convenient for you all, we can start by taking next week, which is Memorial Day week off, and then go every other week from there unless we need to change it. Um, but let's, if let, were, so well, let's tentatively okay. do that. So off, so we'd meet the 3rd, the 17th, the 1st. Yep. The 15th, 29th, 5th, 19th. Well, probably not the 5th because I'm not going to be here. But <laughs> Okay. When we get to August, we can figure that out. Okay. Um, but yeah. Okay. That generally works for folks. That works perfect. That works perfect right. for yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. All right. If you don't mind just shooting off an email with that yep. in text so I can... <laughs> Have record of it. All right, beautiful. Um, and obviously, if members of the board have something come up, just let us all know, and we will be flexible and yeah. Okay. Around. All right. The other order of new business is the marijuana social equity policy. Yeah. So, <laughs> glad I'm bringing this up because I got an email today about it. So, I think in 2022 the legislature amended the marijuana legalization law and changed how those community agreements work and basically required the CCC to do a bunch of stuff and implement regulations. Um, the CCC has done that. One of the things that it is requiring, one of the <coughs> unfunded mandates that it is imposing upon towns is to create a social equity policy um, and put it on the website and basically that gives um, an opportunity for those disproportionately impacted on the war on drugs or marijuana convictions, um, an opportunity or a leg up to apply for a municipal um, cannabis license. So just to clarify, this isn't requiring that the town help in any kind of financial way, right? This isn't like, oh, town has funds to help you get started. This is more of it a- encourages the town to um, reduce fees. Okay. Okay. But no, not direct. Not financial. direct financial right. support. Um, so really, it, it's setting up a policy that says we will do everything in our power to be able to help make these, this happen, but you still have to be able to figure out how to come here and have the funds and secure the funding and whatnot, and we're not responsible for helping you do that. Right. Okay. Can it be short and sweet and something along the lines of the town will do everything in their power to facilitate and help in accordance with the Cannabis Commission requirements? Well, I don't know. I'm having a conversation with, with somebody from the Cannabis Control Commission next week. Uh, they, I think, I think recently, um, like within the last month or so, released a model ordinance and bylaws. Um, I think that the Deerfield social equity policies are very similar to the model that the state had. So I, I think there are certain minimum things. We can't just say... We will be open to social equity candidates um, as defined by the CCC. It has to be a little bit more specific. Okay. Um, but, you know, I think Deerfield's is two pages. I, th I think anything less than one page would probably be considered not um, enough. But. Okay. So, I guess I have some confusion over this. It's a... You can't get loans or anything else to open up these type of businesses, right? Largely. Not, not bank loans. Not from banks that will that want to do business federally. No. So, <laughs> I'm not sure where. Oh, no. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Where I'm not trying to be bitchy about it, but if this is kind of like a, you got to have quite a bit of cash to open this up. How would you even qualify to 
need reduced fee. You know, I, I, yeah, I, I don't know the answer um, other than. I mean, we have to do it. We have to do it. I understand that. It's just, I, I'm not sure how somebody would even qualify so, for. And I understand the intent. The intent behind it is to say, hey, in the past, these, these pol we're acknowledging that the policies that put people in jail for a long period of time for simple possession and whatnot were overly punitive, and we want to give people a, you know, a leg up in, in, in trying to do this because you know we feel bad about that. I, I get the, the intent behind it. But it feels to me like rather than the state then saying, oh, and in order to facilitate that, we're going to put aside $500 million for interest-free loans to people who qualify based on our guidelines to be able to make that actually happen in real life rather than just putting on the town to, oh yeah, create some sort of policy that will make this all look good for us without actually, as Jeff said, you know, funding that mandate. Um, if I could just take this opportunity to also point out that the state collects 17% uh, tax in the municipality, which the state said we can't collect host community impact fees, um, we only collect 3%. So we get so. three. We don't reduce that. That that stands no matter who we. Yeah. Okay. 3% so of gross So what, what kind of fees are we talking What fees could we reduce? Like a building permit? permit? Yep. That's it. Yep. Which I don't know. I mean, Again, maybe this is just my opinion, but if I was, if, if somebody was a formerly incarcerated drug dealer who was trying to put in a apartment complex in town, would we give them a break on on their permitting fees? You know, this, this doesn't seem to me like we're helping people on a small scale. The only people who benefit from this would be somebody who's talking about a multi-million dollar business deal yeah. and at that point like I'm sorry but like do they really need a leg up at that point like they're it's already cash they're multi there with, like a, a multi-million dollar cash like deal like I'm, I'm not sure that like the the eighty dollars we would give them a break on the on the permitting fees is going to make any kind of drop in the bucket there so anyways, I, I I have a whole lot of questions that being said we have to, to do something can we basically take Deerfield's or the the the, the sample one yeah, I, I think I wanted and... to start the conversation just to see if there was any particular items that you wanted included before I made the first draft um, so that I could, but I, I could start by looking at Deerfields, looking at the sample, sort of combining them and, and having something in two weeks for you guys to look at, if that's all right. Yeah, that would be great. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, I, don't have, I can't think of anything specific outside of what I'm sure the minimum would be that I would want to include in there because... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll do the best we can. All right. Thank you. I mean, and, and again, I get, I get this for a town like Boston or Worcester or Medford or some large municipality that like is going to have seven of these, ten of these, fifteen. Even Northampton, like I could see this being a bigger deal because they have what, like six of them in Northampton. We're probably only going to have one, maybe two ever. I'd yeah. also point out that all those cities have planning departments, if not economic development staff, that can work on this and, and yeah. It'd be nice if, if maybe the, the Cannabis Control Commission said, hey, this is our this is the blanket policy all towns have. If you want to make one outside of the policy, feel free to. But like or if you or if you want to apply apply for exemptions on any of these items. Yes. Yeah. But just if, if they have a, a minimum standard that their template says you have to do X, Y, and Z, great. Yeah. You have to do X, Y, and Z, you're telling us, cool, if we break that, you call us on it and you find us. That's how the commission works. Like, why do we have to put in writing what you want? You well, I so the state gets 17, we get three? I believe so. Why don't they just give these folks 10? They take 10 from them and make it sweeten it that way. <laughs> or as I said, take that 17, take half of that, well, put it into a saying, fund and well, offer 0% well, well, interest. Yeah, yeah. Loans because you hey, can't take out a loan. You, well, the, the only reason you can't take out a loan is because banks are afraid the federal government's going to shut them down because it's still illegal to the federal level. Well, if the state is yeah. already saying no, we, we we're, we're disagreeing with the federal government. The state can give loans whoever they want, and they're not going to be shut down by the federal government. Do you have state banks? Do you have state banks? You could jeopardize federal aid to the state. Well, you, you could. could. You could. Yeah. I mean, but that argument could also <laughs> be made for having legalized marijuana in general. True. 
I'm sort of like it's sort of a once a band-aid's been pulled. Uh, we're getting into the weed here about something that's in our business. Yeah. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> that's all new business today. Uh, old business, select board updates. Um, nothing big, just a reminder to everyone that this Friday is the Memorial Day Parade. Um, if it is a um, rainy day, there is a plan for a indoor event. Is that correct? Yes, in the uh, elementary school gym. Yeah, okay. So hopefully the weather will be lovely. We've had great luck with that in the past. Hopefully that will continue on in the future. Um, that's all I got. Anything from you? I've got nothing. Wonderful. Okay. Yeah. This week. Beautiful. That's what I like to hear. It must be getting into summertime for us. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, Jeff, that's all for select board updates. Anything from town administrator side? Yeah. Um, the kayak kiosk is finished. So a special thanks to Lauren Starr. Um, I hope I remember everyone. Hollis Graves, Dana Roscoe, and Jim Williams, um, and then the architects, uh, Naomi Darling and Ray Mann. They were all out yesterday putting the final touch. And obviously, Catherine, I'm stopped for you know, <laughs> driving this. But the screens are up. The tables are up. So that is more usable now. So that's exciting. That's great. Okay. Um, and then the only other thing I was going to mention is um, we have uh, a letter that we've drafted to Representative Blay and uh, Congressman McGovern regarding the applicability of OSHA standards to emergency responders and specifically our fire department. The fire chief has concerns. Um, they're already regulated by the NFPA. Um, having OSHA standards would require a lot more trainings um, and be financially uh, very difficult for the department to handle. So um, basically we're not saying don't do it, but we're saying consider these things before you do it. Um, so, I don't know if you wanted to mention anything in the letter or had any thoughts. I, I, I trained as an electrician, and I can tell you that the FPA text is extremely, extremely clear about lots of things, including safety. Um, in fact, the whole reason behind it was because when electricity started getting put in across the United States, a lot of things burned down really fast. So they were like, hey, we should probably do this. And so they drove a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, I have no doubt that the FPA is adequate. So I support this letter. Um, I don't have anything in particular that I wanted to add. I just, you know, I, 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 I want to make clear I'm all for OSHA, I'm all for safety. But if they're already safe, adding an extra burden to a town of our size, you know, that's hard. Crystal, you want anything? Or? No. Okay. That's all I got. All right. All right. At this time, uh, pursuant to Mass General Law, ch Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Paragraph 3. Um, sorry, before that, do we have any public comment? I do not see anyone in person or on the heavy. All right. Um, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Paragraph 3, discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares. Police Union, Sunderland Police Association, First Town of Sunderland, MUP 229503. Uh, we are moving to executive session. We will return to public session just to adjourn after the said executive session. And I need a vote to do so, right? I roll call. All right. So, go ahead. Huh. You ready for roll call? Yep. Mm -hmm. motion. motion first. Yeah, I motion we enter executive session. Second. All right. We have motion made and seconded to enter executive session. All those in favor, roll call vote. Aye, Crystal Drake Chambly. Aye, Dan Murphy. Aye, Nathaniel Waring. Three nothing. Yep. All right. Thanks, everybody. Keep it on.